So today we have four hours of lecture, but I personally think that I could learn the material more efficiently using third-party resources at home. So for that reason, I'm just gonna stay at home and learn the material on my own. But first I have a ton of Anki cards to do, over 500. So let's just do a fun game and see how many hours it takes me to do these cards. Just finished hour three and I'm all done. I did 708 cards in total. Now I'm definitely gonna eat lunch. All right. I am outside of the nephrology clinic getting ready to go shadow. Something about me is that I always get really nervous before I go do something for the first time, like first day of school, first day of a new job, first, first day of shadowing. I've noticed that I'm getting better at doing these first things and I think that it'll get easier and easier and it's gonna be something that I need to get used to because throughout medical school you're always kind of starting back over when you do a new clinical rotation you start with a new physician so I have to get used to kind of starting back from square one it will be good it will be good what's up guys it's currently negative 19 C outside I'm gonna go out to my car. It's gonna be like a cold plunge. super excited because surgery is something that I'm really interested in pursuing. Also, I worked in an orthopedic clinic during my gap year, so I have a decent background on the way that things usually work in the clinic. As I was driving here, it was like an hour and a half drive. I was just like thinking about if I knew a year ago that I would be in this position, I would just be like so happy. It really just made me feel very grateful for this opportunity that I have to shout out today. Just picked up my uh, badge. Hopefully uh, we'll see some cool cases today and I'll let you guys know how it went after I'm done. All right, I'm on my lunch break. The physician that I am shadowing is a knee specialist. So most of the things that we've seen are relating to the knee. However, right when I saw and first met the physician and his assistant, he had a chart in his hand and he handed it to me and he said, this patient in this room hurt his hand, go in there and find out what happened. So I was like, okay and I've never actually interviewed a patient as a medical student yet, but I gathered myself, went in there, and I just said, you know, I heard you hurt your hand. Like, can you tell me what happened? And this guy was super nice. I introduced myself as medical student Ben, and uh, again, that's the first time I've ever introduced myself as a medical student to a real life patient not a standardized patient, so it was really cool. Like I said, I've worked in an orthopedic surgery clinic, so we saw a lot of stuff that I'm a little bit familiar with, so it was cool to be able to talk to the physician, some of the experiences that I've had in my uh, gap year job days. Now it's lunchtime, and the city I'm in has a really large Hispanic population, so really wanted to get some good, authentic Mexican food. So they recommended that I come to this taco truck, and it's super cool, I'll show you guys. I feel like it's gonna be bomb. All right, so here's what I got. This is a quesadilla, chicken quesadilla. And then I just got a carne asada taco as well. Looks so freaking good. All right, back at home. And what am I doing? Doing Aki. I woke up at 5.45 this morning to go drive out to my uh, rotation. So I'm super tired, but uh, I only have 100 cards left, so 
pretty much right when I get done with my cards, I'm just gonna go straight to bed. I'm definitely thinking about orthosurgery, taking that more seriously as a specialty to consider. Yeah, I'm so tired. I literally just wanna go to bed right now. Something that you're gonna hear a lot in the future, whether that's when you're in medical school, maybe even before medical school, is the importance of research as medical students. Ever since step one was moved to pass fail, that has helped a lot of students, but at the same time, it has removed a parameter that residencies can look at when ranking applicants. So traditionally, there's been a step one score and a step two score, and those were two of the really big parameters that residencies used to rank applicants. And by applicants, I mean people who have finished four years of medical school. Now, step one has been changed to pass fail. That has removed one of those parameters. So now the two big things in 2023, 2024, and so on, are step two score and research. Whereas traditionally research has not really been as important as other things. So what we always hear as first year students is that we need to get into research as soon as we can, especially if you want to apply to a competitive specialty or a subspecialty. So coming from a school where, how do I put this? We don't have as many research opportunities. That is a very challenging step for me. Finding research is really, really difficult and it looks like cold emailing people, trying to use any connection that you have towards medical research, and leveraging that to be able to help out with a publication or help out with a project. But I don't really have that many um, connections. In undergrad, I did a little bit of research with uh, Giardia, which is a parasite, but I've never done clinical research. So I've been cold emailing a bunch of people and not really getting much um, response. But after sending tons and tons of cold emails, I finally found some people who are willing to take me on um, as kind of like a research assistant in ophthalmology. Specifically, what we're going to be researching is neovascular glaucoma. This is not at my medical school, it's at a different medical school. So it's taken some time for me to get onboarded at that other school to be a researcher there. I've done my reading and learned a lot about glaucoma in the past few weeks, but right now I have a meeting and we're going to be going over the specifics of what the expectations of my role are going to be. Super excited because I'm through with the phase of kind of looking and searching for opportunities and actually finally gonna get started on a project. By the way, that's also something that has taken me away from making YouTube videos because I need to like focus on uh, my future as a physician and as a future residency applicant. So yeah, I know some of you guys wanted me to talk about the clinical research and that's what I have to say about that as of now. Um, in future videos, I'll definitely tell you guys more about what I'm doing, but I'm just at this point, again, really excited that I have any research at all. All right, so I just got done with my meeting. Definitely a lot of um, stuff that I need to learn, especially about Excel and uh, statistical analysis, but that's okay. I'm always excited to learn. Today's Friday, so for the rest of the weekend, I'm gonna try to get ahead for next week. And uh, right now, I have a date with 275 Anki cards, so. Gonna get to it. Uh, post it on YouTube. 